everybody, welcome back once again to The Art of Photography. My name is Ted Forbes. To website or not to website, that is the question. That's an excerpt from a famous play uh, by a very legendary author, uh, playwright, William Shakespeare. Actually, William Shakespeare never said that. Um, uh, I'm saying that. In fact, William Shakespeare never had a website, which in a weird way leads me back around to what I'm talking about today. Um, this is an interesting idea because we've done podcasts before where we've talked about uh, online presence, what you can do online, uh, social media, things like that. And this is a landscape that's always changing. And we're going to look at some examples. So I kind of like to do these episodes every so often to update kind of current what's out there. Um, generally speaking, here's the deal. There, you know, there's so much competition. There's so many things online. Trying to figure out how to stand out really is you know, the bottom line. Uh, and we're going to look at some websites today. And I get questions from people a lot saying, you know, what's the best way to do a website? Should I learn how to code first or should I do? You know, it depends on what your needs are and what you want to do. Um, again, I think that's kind of the wrong question to ask. Um, I, I can put that to bed real quick. If you're not interested in coding, you don't need to. And so forget it. Get out of that game because you'll drive yourself nuts. You'll become me. And I get very anal retentive and I spend way too much time coding websites and getting into that aspect of it. But what's more important, if you want your work to be seen online. I mean, there are people out there who just have Facebook or use Twitter or use like a Tumblr account or any of the free stuff, use Flickr. Uh, this can get you work to some degree. Uh, it depends on how you promote it and what you do to kind of hustle that. Um, I do like to have a personal website. Um, if you've never seen mine before, it's focus.nu. I wanted to get a short name and the .coms were taken, so focus.nu is what I decided to do. Uh, anyway, so if you look at focus.nu, that's my portfolio. Uh, but honestly, um, when I look at my statistics and how many hits I'm getting, that's probably the lowest on the totem pole as far as you know all the places I have images and how I promote them. I like to have it because if I want to send some there without other distractions. Uh, you know, one of the problems with Flickr is other people have images on there too, and it's really easy to start clicking around and get out of what you want them there to look at. I can send them to my personal portfolio. However, I've found in general people don't stumble across my personal portfolio. They find out about me through some other means and they end up there. Uh, but anyway, let's look at that. Let's go to the computer. Let's check some stuff out. And, uh, you know, those are all kinds of things to consider when you're looking at this realm of, uh, of promoting yourself online. Okay, so what we're going to be looking at here today is a lot of things. And before I get cooking on that, I want to show you, uh, if you've never been here, this is the show webpage. In fact, this is where I keep all my podcast stuff that I do. And the URL on here is www thepublicbroadcast.com thepublicbroadcast.com so if you go here um, and uh, there's a reason I'm showing this if you click on shows click on art of photography and you can go in here and you can search through all the episodes so if I click on episodes you can find the latest episode obviously I'm recording it right now so it's not up yet but if I go in here to select an episode I keep down here show notes on every episode right under the video and so I will list out all the links that I'm showing you today on here so you don't have to write them down or anything you can just go here and click on them and select them um, so anyway, that'll, it, like I said, there's a lot of information today and, uh, you know, you can go here and shortcut it if you want. Um, so anyway, I'm just going to kind of get through all this as quick as we can and explain everything and explain the reasons why I'm recommending things. Now, I'm also going to be talking about a lot of services today for various things. And I want to make a note right off the bat that I am not being sponsored or paid any money by any of these. These are actually things that I use or have used in the past or I'm familiar with and then I'm actually recommending them to you. So I don't want you to think that this is a large advertisement for people either. So anyway, um, okay, so showing your work online and, uh, you know, having your, your stuff accessible, gaining an audience, uh, etc. That's kind of what we're getting at here. And the question is, is whether you need a website or not. And so I'm going to show you a lot of different options for different things. Um, I think either way, whether you have a website or whether you just want to go with something like Facebook or something like that. Um, I think there's pros and cons for doing both, but I think in either case you need to be involved with the social media. So that means you need to have a Twitter account, you need to use it, you need to have a Facebook account, etc. And so obviously, I'll shut that, the big three... Um, our Twitter, um, obviously Facebook, which most people are familiar with. And then finally, I think the new player is Google+. And these are the big three. I would have accounts on each one of these. I think you need to learn how to use them. They all have kind of different things they do. There's a different context for using each one. And I think you need to treat them like that. There are services that will let you, you know, do one post and throw it out to everything, which certainly saves time. And I do use those for certain things. But I think it's more important. There are things that, that you can do with Twitter that are more appropriate than doing with the others and, and being able to use those that's what's going to be get people who follow you interested and reminded about what you're doing and, and new work and so a lot of times I'll post links into Facebook and I'll post them into Twitter but I might actually upload the image onto Google Plus Google Plus has a really cool way of handling images 
um, which is really nice. Now, Google Plus is still in beta at the time I'm filming this, and if you need an invite, send me an email, let me know. Um, but I, I've, I've completely adored this service. I think it's awesome. I think Google are doing a great job on this, and there's a lot of things that I really like about it. Now, also bear in mind that if you're going to use services like this, they probably will rotate every couple of years. You remember things like MySpace and Friendster, and they're kind of you know obsolete at this point. And Facebook, Google Plus, Twitter, they may all find a niche in the same or <laughs> retire in the same way at some point. But these are really excellent ways to get the word out about what it is that you're working on. And it, it, you know, if you put new work up to your website, expecting that people are going to check in regularly with your website is kind of optimistic at best. I don't think people are going to do that. You need to remind people. You need to let them know when there's new work up. Uh, that's how I operate on things. If there's things I'm interested in, it certainly helps me if I can get a tweet and I know that, that there's a new image up or there's a new whatever. Um, so anyway, being able to use all the social media stuff, or the, the big three at least, I think that's really, really important. So beyond this, okay, so where are you going to put your images? Where are you going to host them? Do you need your own website? all that stuff. Well, let's look at some some options where you don't have to do any coding, uh, anything like that at all. In fact, I think that's almost better because even if you do know how to code a website, sometimes your time may be spent better uh, taking pictures and not fighting with code all the time, which can certainly happen. Um, you get bogged down in options, etc. Um, most people are familiar with Flickr. Flickr is really great, and I think if you're going to take a step beyond the social media, this really goes hand in hand for a photographer. And Flickr, if you do the annual paid account, um, they have a free account, but it comes with ads, and there's a limit to how much you can upload. But if you do the annual one where you pay, um, it's very cool, and you have unlimited images. What's really nice is I can upload really big images. I can set privacy settings. I can set um, whether people are able to download them or not. Um, and it does its own rendition sets. The other cool thing, too, let's click on this image. I'll go to the page for that image. Um, I can obviously go up and cut and paste this link and throw it into the social media. I can tweet it, something like that. But Flickr also has the buttons right here. So if I want to send an email out to a list or if I want to share this on Twitter or Facebook, I can do all this stuff. You can also click on this little share drop down and you can grab code to embed your image in a blog, etc. And this is one of the things that's made Flickr um, very useful to people you know, in these terms is that you upload your image and it's in a certain place and it's very open to sharing it with, with whoever you need to. And um, that makes this really strong. So Flickr is a great option to that. Now the downside is, is that if you are wanting to do commercial work or you want to sell prints or you want to get into making money on your photography, um, something like Flickr is a little bit of a bad choice because it is more of a social network and it's open and people People will get kind of lost and you can go click on other people's stuff and you'll see other users and and so it really doesn't isolate you very much and that's good for social media it's probably not so good if you're trying to get a client the other thing is it kind of looks like you didn't spend much time or money on your website if you just went with Flickr so there's a couple options that you can go with to kind of go to that next step of having your own website okay so um, the first thing you want to deal with is what's called a domain name and these are things like tedforbes.com or the public broadcast com or whatever you know your name here it's your dot com or whatever extension you want you can get dot net dot org etc um, you never own a domain name you lease them okay so you would go to a service like hover and I like hover a lot there's also GoDaddy there's a million of them and you're going to basically register your domain name. There's an annual fee for this. You can renew it every year. You can get 10 years at one time, or you can get one year at one time, just renew it every year. These services are usually good about reminding you when something's due. Um, so that's a really good option. So what I would do is, and I'll be honest with you, even if you don't have plans to do a website, I would go ahead and get your domain name. Um, for instance, if there's another Ted Forbes out in the world who got mine first, then that wouldn't have been open to me or anything else that I've done. So I would go ahead and get your domain domain name. Go ahead and pay for it. It's you know, it's not that expensive. There's an annual fee and you have it if you need it. That's a very important thing to do. So beyond this, um, there's some other services that you can use to hook this domain name up to where you still don't have to do any coding. That's pretty nice. Um, one I'll show you here. This is a site called SmugMug. And if we go to, let me just go to their front page here. Uh, these guys are really nice guys. Uh, I've dealt with them in the past and they have a really wonderful service. This is a paid service, but it allows you to use pre-built templates. You can customize your own if you want, but this gives you a place 
um, to build your own website to show off your images. Um, I think that it's really beautiful. A lot of the stuff they do, they've got some good templates in here. It also supports uh, it's paid service. It supports unlimited uh, uploads. I think you are limited to, I think it's 24 megabytes in size, but uh, you can have as many photos on here as you need. And it also supports HD video. So if you're doing any video projects as well, you can post your portfolio on here with that. Um, this is just one of my galleries in here, um, and I can completely customize this. I really haven't. I hate to say because I, I don't actually use this um, often other than just testing and for small things but it does build these galleries I can go customize the look I can you know do a, my custom banner on it and I can send this link out you can also hook up that domain name that we just talked about getting uh, you register your domain name and you can hook it up to this so if I wanted to hook up tedforbes.com to this I could and uh, then people would go there and here's my website and they can see my images um, the cool thing about smug mug is it also supports uh, selling your images on here so if you do stock work or if you want to sell print something like that they've got some great options in here for that so that's smug mug another good one is 500 px and let's go ahead and go there now um I have an account on here, and I'm kind of new to 500px. This is a little more; it's somewhere between Flickr and SmugMug, um, and you can hook up your own domain name to this, and it works pretty well. Um, I have not actually hooked my own domain up, but I have uploaded some images, and I really like how this works. Again, this is a little bit in the neighborhood of Flickr, and it's a little bit of a social network. So, again, if you're just trying to send a client here or somebody who's interested in buying a print from you, uh, I think it's more important to have your own. So, I would do something like SmugMug or this. Okay, so a step up from these services would be to actually uh, get your own hosting service, put your own code on there, and do your own hosting. And there's a several options you have for something like this. Again, if you don't want to get too much into coding, you can go with somebody like, uh, let's see, I'll pull up their site. This is Media Temple's website, and I've been with them for years. Um, None of these web hosting services are perfect. You got to find somebody you like. Um, Media Temple are great. There's others. There's Rackspace. There's uh, there's a ton of them. Just you know, ask. What I would do is rather than Google it, I would ask people you know have a website who they recommend and uh, get something based on that. Um, there's a lot of different pricing structures, a lot of different options. But basically, this allows me to. They set up some server space on their grid in uh, California, and I hook my domain name up to that, and I have full. FTP access and I can put whatever code I want to run my website. And I'll show you some options if you want to self-host your own website that you have. Now, we talked about if you don't want to code, you don't want to get into that at all, what are your options? Well, I will show you one. Um, this is an application that I wrote uh, actually about five years ago, and the reason I did it was because at the time I was doing a lot of portfolio websites for photographers and illustrators, and I had a lot of requests that I couldn't accommodate, or I would just be a little expensive, and um, you know people couldn't always afford that, and I don't think they needed it. So what I did is I wrote this program called Satellite. It's kind of a free alternative, so you can download this. I'll put the link in the show notes, and it's free. And basically what this does is you set it up on your own server with your domain name and you basically open the configuration file and you put in your Flickr account and what it does is it will pull all of your images from Flickr into the satellite gallery so here's Flickr and Flickr has a little back-end interface and if I go to recent work you will see that in order here are all my Flickr images that are up okay so it's pretty cool and you can have how many you want to display on a page if I click on one then you get the thumbnail will enlarge to a bigger image you can set all this stuff it's highly customizable you can put your own HTML your own style sheets uh, everything into this it's a really easy option and what this allows you to do is then when you're uploading new work just go upload it to Flickr but when you send a client to see this you send them to your website which is satellite and it's just basically a mirror of everything that is on Flickr um, the home page basically when I go here um, this will, when I refresh it, it grabs a random image out of my latest 50 or something like that. Uh, photo sets, it allows you to do your galleries just like you do on Flickr. And so anything I do on Flickr, you're going to see on satellite, which is really nice. Um, again, there's got a few downfalls to this. It's, the code's about five years old, and there's some new things that Flickr's, in fact, a lot of new things that Flickr's introduced between then and now. So I don't have support for video, for instance, and I don't have collection support, things like that. You could customize it if you know what you're doing. Uh, hopefully in the next year or so, I'll be able to uh, um, do a version 2.0 of this and uh, offer that for download. But uh, for now, this is what I've got. So that's satellite. Um, a step up from this would be to do something uh, such as WordPress. And WordPress comes in two flavors. And WordPress is a blogging software. 
And basically, let me show you the other one. There are two WordPresses. There's WordPress.com. And if you go here, uh, WordPress.com, they host all your content for you. So you don't need a web host. You can hook up your domain name to this. Uh, it's a lot less customizable than if you just download it on your own. But you can do some great stuff here. They, it's free. Uh, they have some paid add-ons that you can get if you need more. Um, if you really want total versatility and customizability with WordPress, then you can go to WordPress.org instead of .com. And you can actually download the WordPress and install it on your own server. And this is so awesome. I use this for a lot of things. Uh, WordPress was designed to be a blogging engine originally, but they've made some nice additions to it. And you can run just basically anything that needs content management. So you could run a business website out of here. You could run a photography gallery. You could run whatever you want to do. Um, I love WordPress. I use it. In fact, the publicbroadcast.com is all WordPress. Uh, I use it on a lot of things. So um, I'm a big fan. Uh, I use the one where you download it and host it yourself. But uh, they're both both options are open, and you get a little more control over this, over your design, everything else that you're working on. So anyway, that's a great option for something like this. Um, and then finally, uh, another thing, if, if you really want to go deep here and you do know what you're doing with coding, etc., uh, this is my personal portfolio website. This is focus.nu. And like I said earlier, um, I you know the name Focus, I just wanted a short name, so I went with kind of a strange um, third-party extension for another country, but uh, it works for me. So focus.nu, and this is something that maybe one day if I can get it to a point where I feel like it's it's good enough, I will release it and for download. But right now, uh, okay, here's the idea behind focus is that whatever you end up choosing um, beyond social media, whether it be Flickr, whether it be, you know, uh, WordPress, having your own website, using something like SmugMug, I think the, the most important thing, and this goes for any of these solutions, is make sure it's as easy to update as possible. And let me say that again. Make sure it's as easy to update as possible. And the reason is, is if it's difficult to update, you will stop putting new photos up. That's just how it works. Everybody gets busy. You have other distractions on the internet and on your computer, and it will just, you know, spiral downhill, and you will stop showcasing your new work. So it needs to be easy. And the idea behind Focus is I wanted to write a bunch of code that would live on the server. And all I had to do was put images in a folder, name them, and put them up on the on the FTP server, and then Focus would do the rest. And that's what it does. If I have a folder of images, for instance, if I go in this, um, I'll just grab the still life set, I basically create a folder on my computer. I, I label it still life or whatever I want to call it. And I put some JPEGs in there and I upload it to the server. Now, when I click on that, it automatically makes all the thumbnails. It crops everything uh, for me. And, you know, when you click on one of these, it will open up in a uh, Ajax kind of window here. Uh, but what I like about this is that, you know, all of the, the complexity and all the options are in the code. They're all behind the scenes. So for me, this is a really good way to go. All I have to do literally is upload a folder of images. And if I want to take images off the site, I can just delete that folder of Images. So this makes things easy for me. Um, I would like to make it so I could order the images and do some other things other than just by name and still working on some of that. But this is kind of my work in progress. Note that I did get it to a point where I could at least put it online and it's easy to use. So, you know, something like this is a little different. Um, it's all entirely hard coded by myself. And, uh, you know, but this is a good way to go. Obviously, you have the most control over something like this, but it's the most um, time and energy consuming of the lot to do. And so I think... I'm not really answering the question here as much as I'm showing you what's available, um, but having that domain name, hooking it up to something, and being able to showcase your work. Um, I'm a big believer that I, I, you know, you need to use the social media stuff but you need to use that to send people to your website. That's my personal opinion. Your mileage may vary. I've seen photographers that don't even have a website, but they just use Facebook, and that's it. And they do pretty well off of that, and they have a way. Um, but usually people like that are more uh, aggressive in terms of cold calling clients, um, you know, going out and finding customers if they're selling prints, that kind of thing. Your mileage can vary, like I said, and sometimes it's easier to let some of the social media and your website do some of that lifting for you. Um, uh, one other thing I want to mention is, is a solution like this for, for focus. This is great, but notice that there's no not a lot of text on here. And this is very cool uh, in just terms of having a minimalist quality to it visually. And for me, that's fine because I'm just sending people links to look at work. Um, I'm not relying on search engine technology. And a lot of photographers get really into you know scoring higher on the search engine level. There's nothing wrong with that. That's a good thing to strive for. But unless you have text around your images, it's hard for the search engines to catalog you. 
So one thing you might want to consider is even just setting up a basic blog. So use WordPress.com. Use the free version. Use Word or uh, let's see, Blogger.com is another one. There's a ton of blogging engines that don't require you to do anything than to go sign up, and they're free. And you can learn to write about your images and describe them and talk about them in detail. Not just list what camera you shot them with, but talk about what you were going for with the picture, what is in the picture, things like that. Give people something to read, and that also gives the search engine something to catalog. Uh, my personal website, that's not really a goal of it. Um, I'm doing that in other places. Um, you know, with, with uh, I don't really have a blog that I'm keeping steadily at the moment, but but between Google Plus and Flickr and having those links, uh, people can find my work, and hopefully that will give me some search engine ranking there. Anyway, um, these, these are a lot of options, and, uh, you know, I think in future podcasts, it'd be a good idea to kind of break these down um, and talk you know, maybe just do a whole podcast on social media for photography or uh, building your website, things like that. Uh, but I want to give you a broad overview today. Once again, all the links are in the show notes at thepublicbroadcast.com. Okay, so I know I didn't answer anybody's question of whether you should have a website or not, but you should do something. And I think really the bottom line is coming up with what it is you want to be able to do online. What kind of budget do you have? What kind of resources do you have? What kind of knowledge do you have of coding? There's something for everybody out there. Um, it, you know, you can get really nice solutions that actually cost money. You can get solutions that work that don't cost anything. I think more importantly, rather than trying to figure out what the vehicle is going to be, is trying to figure out how you're going to drive it and what you're going to do. Um, starting with the free stuff allows you to experiment with a little bit more with that um, but anyway you have to make up your own mind in the end uh, you know it just depends on what your needs are what you want to be doing as a photographer how you want to share your images etc so anyway I hope that you found that useful once again this has been the art of photography and thank you for watching <laughs>